everybody, it is Kellogg's in here, but before we get started, let me say thank you to Huntsman Tier patron Edwin and Academy Professor Jackson B. Buchanan for supporting me on Patreon. So, this video is a little late because of the live stream yesterday, those are archived if you guys want to see those, but anyway, let's get started. So Hunter's gonna pretend he doesn't believe in Bumblebee, and I'm gonna analyze Armed and Ready for him. That is the whole point of this. And so, as you guys know, the music in Ruby's really important, there's a lot of foreshadowing in it. A good example of this would be, like, obviously when it falls, uh, but something else, um, would probably be, uh, I'm the one, maybe? Because that mentions a lot of Mercury's and Emerald's backstory, and I think it talked about it before we got it? Or after, but but obviously you see that the music does kind of, there is relation to the text. Uh, I can't remember when that song uh, actually played, so maybe that's not the best example. Also, well, I mean, you have like Burn and Die, like all of those kind of tell the stories of the characters. So it's kind of obvious that this one has some significance to Yang, a lot of significance uh, to future events and things like that, or just to Yang in general, so that's why we're gonna talk about it for those of you that are a bit, like, skeptical of how music plays into the show, Hunter. So, Hunter, you, you don't believe in, you don't believe in Bumblebee, you don't believe in Yang, you don't believe in the music bullshit, hypothetically. hypothetically. Well, Hunter, Hunter doesn't actually, like, I had to, like, go, sit down with him and, like, show him how the lyrics related back to the show, because he was like, the music doesn't mean anything, and I was just like, four shadowing and hunter was like i think he made it that was, noise it was less that i didn't think there was foreshadowing and more that i really didn't give a shit thanks for that okay so let's get started uh it happens every night I watch my world ignite. I'm not gonna sing this, guys. Uh, but there's no waking from this nightmare. So obviously, in that first part, she's talking about you her mean PTSD you're not nightmare. Sing? No, I, I'm. I petition you to sing. No. <laughs> uh, so, obviously, that's talking- Can we all agree that that is just referencing, you know, Yang and her nightmares? Because she does, in the trailer for Volume 4, she does wake up. And is, like, uh, waking up from Adam. I mean, Adam, we all, you also you see know what her I mean? the show. She definitely has, like, she, traumatic stress disorder. Yeah. The stage is always set. The place I can't forget. The hidden eyes that I can feel there. So, the hidden eyes thing- a lot of people just think that that's Adam, and I think in one of the trailers it just just shows Adam's eyes laid over a scene or something. I don't remember what trailer that is. That was three, I believe. Or whatever, but obviously that's referring to Adam. Some people also think that's referring to Raven, because they have this theory that because Adam's sword was a bird, or not his sword, but like the move that he used to cut off Yang's arm had a bird shape, people think that Raven was there and protected Yang. That's a theory for another day, but that's, like, an alter alternative, like, <laughs> meaning. You know, like, an alternative fact if you guys want to- <laughs> If you guys want to think that, you know, that's okay. Um, so this is the more important part of the song. My eyes are opened wide. I'm racing to her side. There's nothing that I won't do for her. So we had an argument in the Discord chat last night, and you guys should join the Discord server, because this is the shit that happens. Someone thought this was talking about Ruby, but with the PTSD stuff in the dream, it doesn't make sense. So obviously you have Yang racing to Blake's side, yes? Yeah. I feel like that would be kind of obvious. And here's the important, it's, there's nothing that I won't do for her. Now that's a strong thing to say, you know what I mean? Because- But that could also- be referring Yang and Ruby's relationship because Yang actually goes and chases after Ruby. Yeah, but then when she figures out that Weiss and Ruby are okay, uh, she goes to chase Yang, right? I mean, and this we, we don't know. Or this. she goes to chase Blake, right? Yeah, because what happens is is that Yang leaves the dorm room. She finds Weiss, and Weiss is like, "Hey." everything's good, but we can't find Blake, and she's like, shit, and so she goes and runs after it. remember, and so, I, I understand why people thought that it could be also about Ruby, but remember that this entire song, and you guys will see, it's about her, her losing her arm, so the reference to Ruby doesn't really make sense here, because she's talking about everything that involves Adam, and obviously, like, Ruby wasn't really a part of that, um, so that's kind of why, like, listen, you guys, in, there's always interpretation of music, right? But there's the, probably the imper interpretation. There's the, there's there's the, the right version, yeah. and there's my version. There, there's the one that like Jeff and Alex probably meant. Those are the people that write the music for Ruby. Like there's probably there's that one, and there's also like alternative interpretations of the song. You know what I mean? And so 
when she says there's nothing that I won't do for her and then after but this is not a dream my mind repeats the scene I can't forget it and it's torture like obviously she's talking about losing her arm right like that is the thing that you can't forget so back to that line like that's a strong line for Yang to be saying about Blake and I think that's why I really wanted to cover this song because it does a lot of people are saying it kind of feeds into Bumblebee a little bit and I kind of agree you can feel that way about your friends but I think it's very hard to kind of say that you would die for someone because obviously you can say it but do you mean it like I don't know if Weiss was in that situation I don't know if Yang would like if if Yang knew hey if you go in there and save Weiss, you're gonna lose your arm. Like, I don't know if she'd run in there, right? And obviously, that's not for me to decide. Like, maybe she would. Like, I don't know. Um, because someone argued that the reason why Yang went in has nothing to do with Blake necessarily, but she thought that she could win against Adam, and so it doesn't matter what team na made it is. And I do agree with that, but at the same time, I feel like that we all have, have our limits, and maybe... When she's saying there's nothing I won't do for her, maybe that is in reference to just anything in general and not necessarily that I lose my arm over again sort of thing. And so that's kind of my line of thinking is like, I would do anything for Blake. It's not just I would lose my arm for Blake, like I would do anything for Blake. Because those are two different things, right? And obviously you can say that about your friends, but it's very hard to kind of prove that. And Yang kind of proved that with, uh, with how she saved Blake, but... I don't know, like, there's not a lot of people I would be like, yeah, I'd run into a burning building and save you, Hunter. Like, I'd do that, you know? But then it... <laughs> I was gonna ask, would you run in for me? But you answered that for me. Yeah. So, thank you for that. So, I think that's why that is such an important kind of line, and that's why that line has me kind of stuck on it a little bit, just because that's a very, that's a very strong thing to say. That's a very strong implication there, that she really, at least has a very strong friendship with Blake. And not that she doesn't have a friendship with Weiss, but when you look at the team, her and Ruby are sisters, obviously. She would do anything for Ruby. Blake and her are partners. Like, they've been through a lot together. Like, she kind of divulged her whole story for her and everything like that. Um, and so that's kind of uh, a little bit different. But her and Weiss don't have a lot of interaction. Like, they do a little, but it's not, it's not the same, right? And so... Obviously, I can't decide whether or not Yang would do something for Weiss, but it, I think that's just something to keep in mind, that there's, like, I think there's tears to friendships and relationships, and, like, dying for someone or losing a limb for someone, like, I don't know if you can say that for all of your friends, unless you are a very, like, better person than me. Anyway, so this is a more hopeful part. That was before, but not anymore. I've left it behind, so she's like, I'm not gonna stay in the past. Um, as much as I've lost, once I'm across, I'll fight. So, once I'm across kind of makes me think that that's, like, literal. Once I'm across the sea to get to Mistral. Mistral? <laughs> Not Minstrel. Uh, because if you look at the map, like, Patch is, like, an island, like, over on this side. And then Anima is on the other side. And so she's kind of crossing the sea, like, once I'm across the sea. You, 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 you understand? You get me? You get me, Hunter? Hunter, you can't yes. nod. You gotta <laughs> verbally communicate. They cannot see you. Um, I found the strength to grow so much more. A whisper to a roar. No more crying. It's time for me to soar. I feel like that's pretty... I don't think we need to analyze that. That's pretty basic. <laughs> um, feel like I'm finally unbroken. Feel like I'm back from the dead. This I really like those lines. How she says that she's kind of... Like, she feels like she died a little bit and now she's alive again sort of thing because a lot of people compare yang to a phoenix because i guess you know her mom's a bird so if yang had to be a bird she'd be a phoenix but phoenixes die right and then they They're born from their ashes yes. yeah and so that's that's the same that's the same thing we all read harry potter we know what happens when a phoenix gets <laughs> anyway Good old fox um my strength is back recovered it's glowing now that that kind of makes me think of her semblance, because her hair glows, right? And her eyes glow uh, when her semblance is happening. So maybe, like, um, her, her, that is her strength, is kind of her, her semblance. Or maybe, I don't know, glow it, glowing is a weird word choice there. Just because you think strength is growing, but this has glowing instead. So, like, maybe, like... We, we've seen, there's one of the episodes that's called a shining beacon, right? And that's referring to the school, and that shiny 
shining, something is glowing in the sky, so maybe that's kind of like Yang, like, she's a glowing star, you know, she's burning brightly, you feel me? You feel me? Yes. Um, anyway, then you have, like, out of my way, because I'm armed and ready, and that repeats. Um, obviously she's armed, like, this entire song is a Yang pun, like, she has her arm, that's the whole thing, and she's ready to fight. Um, did not belong too well. I didn't, I didn't see that. I have no idea what that means. Did not belong too well. Did not belong where? <laughs> now we're stuck. I didn't prepare, I didn't prepare enough notes for this. Because it says. Maybe it didn't belong too well. My life think. a living hell, the night my enemy would conquer. Maybe it was like she didn't belong, like, uh, she didn't belong living in Patch. She belonged, you know, Maybe. fighting with the rest of the team. That's where I'd see. Huh. That's weird. That's also a weird wor word choice. Maybe she didn't... B yeah, maybe you're right. She didn't belong staying in Patch and not doing anything. Like, she belongs with her team in fighting. Uh, but she's saying that her time was a living hell. But then it says the night my enemy would conquer. So she's talking about that day. That's why I don't understand. Because she's... I'm, I'm guessing my time a living hell is when... Um, when Adam cut off her, like, I'm guessing that's the, the reference there, but did not belong too well. Why the night my enemy could conquer? Well, I mean, I don't think the knight really left her, because you see, she has Yeah, that's facts, true. So you can make the argument that. So, maybe that's all the time, like, she didn't belong in, in Patch anymore, that's, that may be why. May maybe, like, not belonging in a cage almost, like, because she goes on to say, but now I've been set free, lived through the tragedy... You'll wish you killed me, now I'm stronger. So maybe, like, she felt, again, like you said, she felt trapped in Patch and her time there was, a like, almost a hell. I mean, it, it, she seemed to be okay with her dad, but, like, I'm sure she, <laughs> I'm sure, like, it was hard, hard for her, too. Um, you, you'll wish you killed me, now I'm stronger. I like that. I really like that line. Just because, like, Adam, you're, you're gonna suck it. Anyways. <laughs> Um, I am the golden one who burns just like the sun. Next time we meet is your disaster. Um, I can't remember if gold is about Yang or not. I'm assuming. That's one of the songs, uh, in the Ruby soundtrack that I don't really like. Um, I, it might be about Yang. I don't remember anymore. Um, but there's gold and then there's burn, so maybe that's what that's referring to. But also the golden one thing kind of makes me think of the phoenix thing again. Just because... Phoenixes are gold, aren't they? <laughs> also, the golden one is kind of gold deluxe and the three bears, right? She's based off Goldilocks, right? Yes. Yeah, so I am the golden one. She is literally the golden one. Goldie. <laughs> you know, Goldilocks. <laughs> right, Hunter? I suppose so. Uh, who burns just like the sun next time we meet is your disaster. Obviously, she's talking about Adam. I'll bring the punishment. This time won't be lament. Revenge my happily ever after. See, that's the thing. That's another line that I thought was kind of strange. The ever, the happily ever after part. Because, like, what was, because that, that, I think that kind of implies something. That her idea of her happily ever after was to go to Beacon with her team to graduate and for them to go on like happy adventures you know so and also that's a fairy tale reference right ha like they lived happily ever after so i feel like these two kind of i don't want to say they're verses the these two kind of sets of lines are kind of they're almost referencing the fairy tale right because if you have who burns just like the sun that's more of a reference to what could be like her alternate design which is like a phoenix some people are saying uh, but then, Revenge My Happily Ever After, all of these people are fairy tale characters, right? Not all of them. Well, I mean, I guess so, like, if you count Wizard of Oz and stuff like that. Like, everyone is based off of something uh, that is sort of a fairy tale in nature, let's say, almost. And so, it's almost like she's talking about Happily Ever After in that sense that these characters belong to a story in which, um, it's almost like... If you guys have watched Once Upon a Time, like, you know, like, the characters kind of knew what their story ending was supposed to be, like, to an extent, and there are lots of kind of other, uh, I don't want to say rips off of fairy tales, but you have kind of like, my story wasn't supposed to end this way, 
uh, sort of um, retellings and stuff like that. So it's kind of like, hey, we knew that we were supposed to get a happily ever after because that's how the story is supposed to end sort of thing. And I feel like that's, that's almost a little bit meta, you know what I mean? Just that, especially because, like, you have the Grimm brothers sort of as the gods, right? We kind of talked about that in our other theory video and our analysis, how the brothers Grimm are supposed to be the creators of things, and those are kind of who the gods are based off, right? Because um, obviously they are the creators of Remnant, of the fairy tale world, right? So, you know, we're getting into a little bit what's, like, almost like what the gods originally designed, because in our world, fairy tales do usually end with a happily ever after, but in this world, something's gonna awry. You know what I mean? Like, something's gonna skew. skew. This, this video has gotten very, like, talk about the song, but also, like, this is, like, this is what it means. You know, like connecting it back to the entire show, like this is just about Yang, but I feel like the the music is loaded, and definitely the show itself is loaded with references like that. Um, my misery, my agony has taught me to fight. That that's pretty straightforward. Uh, the pain I went through left me with a newborn grasp, and that's that's another line that I thought was kind of interesting because. You could say a newborn grasp is her new hand, right? Because yeah. her hand is that newborn grasp, right? Um, I live my day like every day's the last. No living in the past. Best days ever. If you guys remember, in volume two, the first episode was best day ever, wasn't it? Yes. Yes. And so I thought that was an interesting reference back to like a happier time with her and her team. Um, and she's never looking back. So she's done, she's done paying attention to the past and everything. Uh, then the other verse repeats. Uh, so this is where things get a bit interesting, because I actually think that this was originally Burn, just because, call me sweetheart and I'll tear you apart, just call me sir. Uh, like, that's obviously from her interaction with Junior, right? Mm -hmm. Um, and so I wonder if this was kind of part of her original song, some of these lyrics, because they fit better with that than what, what Yang is currently do doing, unless we see Junior again, uh, I guess referring to that time, like, she was really strong and badass, uh, during that scene, but at the same time, it's kind of weird to bring up Junior again, just in this current, like, where the show is right now. Yeah. That's why I think they kind of reused those, or, er, that this was originally the song, and then they just took the lyrics and rewrote it. Uh, try to resist when you meet my new fist, bye-bye. So that's pretty, <laughs> like, um... That, that's pretty straightforward, too. Uh, just look at the fire in my eyes and bring my strawberry sunrise. I thought that was a good rhyming right there. That was clever. Good job, Jeff. Um, that also seems very sort of... Bring, the strawberry sunrise is her, um, is her drink that she orders at the bar or whatever. That's why, that's why, like, all of these lines are kind of interesting. You know what I mean? Because it's referring to the bar, but obviously we know she's going to miss Stroll, right? That has nothing to do with Junior. And then, it was you who began it, now you're saying god damn it, right? So, because they talked about Junior there, and then I'm guessing this is supposed to switch back to Adam, but it's kind of, it's kind of weird. You know what I mean? Because it seems like it's you who began it, like she's almost referring to Junior in the context of everything else that she just said. Um, and I could see why she might do that, because Junior technically kind of started everything. Like, he gave Roman the goons, because Roman bought his, his goons, right? That was the whole thing when she went to the bar, is that, uh, Roman hired, like, goons from there, and that kind of did start everything, because that's how Ruby got in a beacon. Uh, so that, I think that this part has a double meaning. She's referring back to that time when she felt strong, uh, but she's also saying that Adam is gonna end up like Junior and get his balls crushed because that's what Yang does in the, uh, in the yellow trailer. Next time there's no compromise. That can be, again, referring to the yellow trailer, uh, where, and, uh, that episode where she kinda let Junior go. Uh, but it probably has the bigger meaning of next time there's no compromise with Adam. Like, cause in a way, Adam kind of did compromise, right? He said, I won't kill you, I'll just chop off your fucking arm. And I'm pretty sure he would have killed her if he, but, but if he had the chance, right? Um, but that's kind of, I feel like no, the, the no compromise is as much of Yang saying next time, like, I will show no mercy. But at the same time, she's saying next time it's you dead or it's me dead. There's none of this in-between bullshit, you know? Um, 
then uh, the verse repeats again, and the song's done! So that is basically my entire song analysis. The reason why I wanted to do this is because the music in Ruby is important. Okay? It's important, and it has important parts. And that needs to be recognized. Also, because... I mean, there is a lot of Bumblebee reference in here, a little bit, right? Especially, the, there's nothing that I won't do for her, um, and things like that. But it's also about kind of Yang, like, regaining herself, and it's a powerful song, and it's a powerful girl song, too, because obviously Yang's a girl. And it's also kind of, like, you know what I mean? Like, it's just, and Casey is singing it, so it's kind of, it has that power behind it where, I don't know, it's just, it, like, uh, almost a female empowerment sort of song, you know? And that's why I really, really like it. Um, you know what I mean? It just, it just is, right? All of the songs in Ruby are kind of like that, because Casey has a powerful way of singing, and the lyrics are always so powerful. And so it is, I don't know. I don't know if you guys feel that way. Like, I'm sure it would empower anybody to listen to it, but at the same time, I'm like, wow, like, this is a team of four powerful girls, and they're doing powerful shit. Now Yang's doing, like, double the powerful shit. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this. Hunter, have I convinced you? Have I convinced you in the music, you know? I still care as little about the music, the majority of the music in Ruby, as I did at the beginning of this video. But you still care about this now, because there might be a reference to Bumblebee. <laughs> you just ro he, he <laughs> rolled his eyes. Look, I know what the video we're going to record next, so I'm, I'm, my heart's broken when it comes to Bumblebee. Rip. Poor Hunter. Anyway, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Don't listen to him. The music is important in the show, and that's why I want to cover it. I also want to cover stuff like chord progression and things like that, how there are certain musical cues, uh, but you know, there's gonna be a long hiatus, and so we're gonna have time. Anyway, guys, I will see you all later in another video. Okay, so, uh, Thank you again to my Patreon, Sunsman Tier Patron Edwin and Academy Professor Jackson Buchanan for supporting me on Patreon, and we will see you guys in the next video, and remember to join the Discord server, the link is in the description, we have like 50 people on, which is a lot of people, <laughs> and uh, I do streams on there, I play with people on there, we get into fights about songs on there, you know, it's all good, it's all good. Anyway guys, uh... Do you have to crinkle that, uh, <laughs> that plastic while we, while we do the video, Hunter? You couldn't have waited until the end. <laughs> Hunter's just looking at me like, I don't care. I have a chocolate now. Anyway, guys, I will see you later. Bye-bye.